This breakout PCB, sponsored by PCBWay, takes an Arduino Nano and provides access to the pins in an Arduino Uno header layout. Nano is very similar to Uno, with some extra dedicated analog inputs, and since Nano is physically smaller, it may be more appropriate to use for a completed project that needs to fit into a small box. But while prototyping and testing, having a breakout board may make development a lot easier. The Nano can just as easily be used on a regular breadboard for testing, but that ties up a breadboard that can't be used for something else, and if there's a lot of DuPont wires and other components around the module, it can be harder to remove or place the module back in circuit without breaking something. It's relatively straightforward to map over the pins from the Nano to the Uno, since they have so many things in common. So on the schematic, I've mapped over the pins one to one and connected up anything where it needs to go, like the SPI pins that are also digital pins, and any power pins, reset, serial communication, analog, just making sure everything goes where it should. And the extra two analog pins on the Nano are going to their own three pin header with a ground to make it easy to hook analog signals up there. And I also just made a copy of the regular serial port transmit and receive pins with a ground so I can plug in off board things, especially if I have a shield plugged into the Uno header pins covering up the serial port pins here. I can just use them elsewhere on the breakout board. And for convenience, I put a physical reset switch on the breakout board, and I also have a DC jack where I can provide between 7 and 12 volts in to power the Nano if I don't have USB power plugged in. And it may be easy to forget when using this on the Arduino breakout board, when setting up a sketch, the project still has to be targeting a nano board, and in my case, I had to use the older bootloader method to get it working. Here's the nano plugged into the Uno breakout board, and I have serial receive and ground plugged in here to this other Uno for a dedicated project I'm working on, but otherwise, with the nano plugged in here, I can just do my regular Uno style projects, and if I want, I can plug in the power here, but I'm using USB to power it right now. So the advantage to using the Nano with this Uno style board, I can use an Uno shield like this older style touchscreen display with all of these extra pins. These days if I were buying one, I would use less pins like the SPI interface, but this one, I've had this since maybe 2018, and there's a crack here in the bottom corner. So I'd like to get this into a dedicated project, and normally that may mean dedicating an Uno to plug into it, but I'd rather still use a Nano and just use one of these boards. So in order to plug in a shield, I set this one up with these tall female sockets, which I basically took from some Wemos D1 Minis, because they come with these tall pin sockets that I never use. So I cut them down to size as needed, and now this shield can plug in and rest above the Nano. So if I remove power, plug this in. This Uno is set up just to send out some text over and over so that I can test this project, which is a portable serial monitor. So if I have a sketch in a board and I'd like to see debug output text, instead of being stuck to a computer, I can just bring this around and plug in the transmit out to the receive in here, and I can see some text. And of course the idea is the text would only be simple things, especially if I'm in portrait mode. I can only put so much text along here before it scrolls. So looking more closely at this, I have a touch button up here for communication rate, and it defaults on power up to 9600, but this board is set up for 115.2k data rate, so I can just cycle through some hard-coded data rates here until I get to 1152, and then I can power this up and start seeing the serial information. So I'll plug this in, and there is some info. I just have it increasing a number, and it's just going to continually scroll. This does have bugs, 
I'm not sure if I don't know how to use it or if maybe this is just so old, maybe the library just isn't as up to date as it could be. Maybe I need to switch to a different display. But there's some weird stuff that happens down at the very bottom. Every time a screen worth of data has scrolled, it'll just kind of take a little longer and it just did it there. It's like it's writing some text over and over and over and then it continues on. Otherwise, if I reset this board here and it starts sending out from a count of zero, now you can see it just started over, but it, it's going to retain some of this data from previously. And it'll just keep that. It's like it's stuck in a screen buffer that keeps cycling around. And some of this is fresh data, but some of it is stale data. I don't really know if that matters at all for me. This is just some experiment. Maybe I can do a better version later. Or if I'm only just printing out a few simple things and then scrolling, maybe it doesn't even matter. Maybe this glitch wouldn't show up. But it's just a little example. So projects like this may be a good use for a Nano to Uno breakout board. In the meantime, I'm just going to still do other projects like this. And when I'm ready to commit to a final project in a box, I can just unplug the Nano put it in a smaller enclosure and go on to the next project.